This is part two of my how to film by yourself series. And today I'm gonna to show you how I shot a spec commercial for my new shoes here on my desk. I'm gonna show you the gear I used, lighting, camera moves, everything. And like I said in my previous video, this is one of the best ways to learn a ton about filmmaking and videography and how a camera works in a super short time span. All by yourself, of course. But okay, first let's watch that commercial again. Now, if you've missed part one, I'll link it in the description. And part one was all about how I come up with ideas and how I plan a shoot like this. So pre-production. So don't forget to check it out if you're having problems with coming up with ideas and planning a shoot. Okay, but now let's talk about how I shot this simple commercial. First of all, the gear I used. My camera, the Sony a7S III, and the lens I used was the Sony 35mm f1.8. But guys, as always, you can shoot a commercial like this with pretty much any camera, okay? The goal is that we learn something and that we make mistakes that we can learn from. Do you have a lower end camera or just a smartphone? No problem, it'll work. The limits to what you can create are usually just up here. It's not your gear. Creativity, that's what it's all about, okay? Okay. I also used a mist filter. Now, you might think a mist filter and smoke a bit too much. Well, I tested it out before I did the shoot and I kind of liked it with the mist filter. So yeah, that's why I used one. But of course, it's all personal preference. If you don't like it, don't use it. I also used a portable smoke machine. This is the LensGo Smoke S. It's a cheaper version of the Smoke Genie, for example, but it did the job perfectly. And I'll link all the gear I used in the description. And you can use it to, you know, haze up a room to create that dramatic cinematic effect. But this one can also create this, look, super thick, almost liquid looking smoke. See that? And that's what I needed for this commercial. And then finally, what I also got, something new, a little skateboard for my camera. It's a skate dolly or tabletop dolly. That's what they call it, I think. And guys, this is such a game changer. Can't believe that I didn't buy this sooner. This one was 20 bucks and it's not as smooth as a slider, of course, a motorized slider, but it's a lot more versatile and quicker in use. And you can use it for so much more than just as a replacement of a slider. So in my opinion, this is definitely a must have for solo budget filmmakers like you and me. Okay, so I guess that's all the gear that I used. Now, lighting. And again, as always, I try to focus on budget lighting. So trying to get the most out of a budget lighting setup. But I did use five lights for this commercial. Now, I think you can get an equally great looking result with less lights, maybe three, but more lights means more flexibility and more control. So, you know, that's why I used the five that I have. But I think with three, you can create something super cool too. I had two LED lights on the desk, one in front of the shoe and one behind the shoe. And this is what the one in front of the shoe did. And this is what the one behind the shoe did. And then one small LED panel to light the background to avoid a black hole, you know, because it's a black background, but I didn't want it to look black black. And then another LED panel to light the entire scene and the shoe itself from the front. And this is what that one did. And then my big softbox was behind the desk to the side and also quite high. So it was shining down on the shoe and it created that nice rim along the top of the shoe, see? But it also lit the smoke from the top. Here's the difference with and without that light. See how the smoke lights up? And yeah, that was my lighting setup. Now, how do I know where to put the lights? Well, I just try it out. I usually start with one light and then I record a few seconds. I go check it out on my computer. And then depending on what I see, I add lights or I move them around. And so, yeah, I just built my lighting setup step by step. And you know, sometimes something also doesn't work. For example, I bought this string LED lights because I thought it would look cool in the background, some red LED string. But then when I tried it and I saw it on my computer, 
and I added the colors a little bit. I don't know, I wasn't convinced. It was too much. So I didn't use it in the end, but that's fine of course, because again, it's all personal preference. If you like that kind of stuff, just use it in your videos, why not? There's no right or wrong with these kind of things. So, you know, do whatever you want. Okay, now before I show you the behind the scenes of all the shots, first, something super important. The backbone, the foundation of a video like this, of, no, of every video, is music and sound effects. And I get all my music and sound effects from Audio, the sponsor of this video. The music in that commercial, that super dramatic cinematic song, was from audio, but also all the sound effects. So they offer everything you need to create super cool videos. And on top of all that, they keep adding more and more tools to help you find the perfect song super fast. Like Link Match AI, for example. Just copy paste a link to a song on YouTube or Spotify and Link Match AI will find similar songs and the closest match in audio's entire library. You can give it a try for free on their website, by the way. Link Match AI is included in the Audio Pro subscription, so go check it out and don't forget to use my link and code in the description. And thank you so much, Audio, for supporting my channel. Okay, and now let me show you the behind the scenes of all the shots. Now, I'm probably gonna forget to explain stuff, but just let me know in the comments, okay? And then I'll answer it there. First shot, the opening shot. That was actually the most difficult shot, even though it's a simple shot because the camera movement is not real. That push in is just a digital zoom that I add later in post. Because, well, here's the thing. Technically, you could use focus racking on your camera and do the push in shot, right? So that the camera does the focus pulling in a way. But first of all, I'm not a fan of focus tracking on the camera because it usually doesn't look perfect, there's always a little bit of hunting. And secondly, because I was using smoke here, it was impossible to use it anyway, because there were no good tracking points in the frame with all that smoke. You know, the camera would like get confused and focus on the smoke. So I decided to do just a static shot with a digital zoom. And because there's no real background, no reference point, it's almost impossible to see that it's a digital zoom. But what made the shot so difficult then? Well, it was that damn smoke. Getting the smoke to do the right thing. Because I wanted the smoke to reveal the shoe, you know? First the shoe covered in smoke, and then after a few seconds the smoke should disappear and reveal the shoe. But it's so difficult because that smoke never does what you want it to do. The slightest movement in the air makes the smoke do a different thing. So what I did was doors closed, windows closed, and then just a matter of trying it five times, 10 times, until I had a shot that looked almost perfect. And remember guys, it's never perfect. So almost perfect is good enough. This shot was pretty similar, also a static shot. I just gave the shoe some more lights and I also added a digital zoom in post. Same for this shot. So all those push-in shots are digital zooms. And again, it's just because it's almost impossible to and move the camera and pull focus and add smoke with this portable smoke machine. You know, I'm just one man, two hands. So in this case, a digital zoom is a great solution. But then when I didn't need the focus to be on one point during the movement, during the camera movement, or when it was a panning shot, which means that the subject stays in focus because the distance doesn't change. Well, for those shots, I used my little camera skateboard. And like I said, this is such a game changer because I used to do these shots handheld. Sometimes I slid my hands over the desk to get a steady shot, but then when the subject, the product is a bit taller and you can slide your hands over the desk, well, then it still looks like a handheld shot sometimes, even with slow motion and stabilization turned on. And this little skate dolly solves that problem. It's not perfect. You need a smooth surface, for example. Also a steady hand if you wanna get a nice evenly paced shot. But for budget solo filmmakers, you have to get one, okay? And again, here also the difficult part was getting the smoke right. So first spray the smoke and then right away do the shot and hope that the smoke would do something cool. And then for this shot, the Air Jordan logo in the shoe, I put the shoe in such a position that the camera was looking straight down the shoe and instead of moving the camera, I moved the light to reveal the logo. So that's another way to create movement in your shot. Not move the camera, but move the light. And I guess that's about it. Yeah, not too crazy, right? Not too difficult, not too complicated. Because, you know, as usual, a lot of the magic happens in the edit. But this shoot was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. 
like man i've learned so much by just doing a lot of stuff it's incredible and that's what it's all about right you make these kinds of videos to learn a ton in a short time span and it worked once again i hope it will help you too i hope it motivates you it inspires you i hope you'll create something yourself and well thank you so much for watching and see you in part three editing